Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Montreal-based jazz pianist and composer Kate Wyatt. We caught up with her to talk about the new debut 2022 CD called Artifact. These days, she stands as one of Montreal's finest musicians, and this album is an excellent glimpse into the many layers of her musicmanship. Originally from Vancouver, British Columbia, she has a lot to say. We cover her life in music, COVID, the future, and so much more. Enjoy this interview. Well, thanks for taking a minute out to the show today. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm happy to, yeah. Your brand new album, Artifact, is coming out with hopefully COVID easing, things getting better, more live shows. How does this release feel for you? Oh, it's huge for me. I mean, like you said, with uh, COVID, everything got really shut down, actually, especially here in Montreal, I think compared to most places in North America. We had a lot of very extensive shutdowns and, you know, we had a curfew for about five months where we had to be in by 8 p.m. So all that to say, I mean, to be releasing this album now, it's not just the excitement of releasing a new album. I mean, I think it's about a renewed um, joy in performing and appreciation and gratitude, you know, for being able to perform my music for audiences. It's really cool. Talk to me a little bit about COVID. Kind of what did you realize during this time of like, you know, being indoors and not playing live music? What did you learn about yourself that maybe you didn't realize before? You know, I hate to say this because COVID has been sort of devastating for so many people and so difficult for so many people. And of course it was for me too in terms of performing. Um, But actually a lot of really great things came for me out of COVID, out of, you know, uh, the shutdowns. I actually, my husband is the bass player on the album, so I live with this amazing bass player, and so we took the opportunity to play as much as possible. So not just with each other, but as soon as we were able, even in the earliest days when you weren't supposed to go to someone's house, you know, we would get together with friends out in the backyard, we'd set up a keyboard, we did whatever we had to. And I actually have sort of four new musical projects, great creative musical projects that were born out of that time when all these musicians who are fantastic, touring, busy musicians suddenly had nothing but time um, to just get together and and jam and make creative music. No more jobbing gigs, you know, just playing music solely for for the purpose of enjoyment and exploration, you know. So I guess I am very grateful, you know, to have had such a positive thing come out of this. And really this new album, Artifact, came out of that as well. This group that I'm playing with on the album, it's exactly that situation. These are some of the most busy working musicians in the city. Um, and we all just had time finally to to get together and jam for fun and enjoyment and sort of create a real group sound and a real interplay. So, yeah, that was the experience for me, for sure. So let's go back to the beginning of your life here. Talk to me a little bit about growing up and what kind of jazz influences made you want to get into jazz. It's kind of funny how I got into jazz. I uh, I went to this high school that by chance, and I did not go there for this, it had this thing called a Career Preparation Jazz Performance Program. Um, you know, it was this high school that had all these career preparation programs. So, you know, you could learn auto mechanics or stuff like that that would give you a trade, you know, when you when you left school. I was a part of the school. And I think this really savvy band director hooked onto that and he created this jazz program where he would sort of receive some of the funding that those type of programs received. And so, you know, I had always played piano as a kid. I took piano lessons and but I think by the time I reached mid high school I sort of, you know, lost a bit of interest in that, the classical thing and, you know, it was a bit of a drag. My mom was saying, Oh, if you're not gonna practice, I don't want to pay for lessons anymore and it just happened right at that time that they said, you know, we need a piano player <laughs> to play in the jazz band for this program. So uh, I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. 
And it was such a fantastic program. You know, all these kids, these young high school kids who are super into jazz. I remember some of my friends who were into it a bit had me just saying mixtapes, you know, Cannonball and Oscar Peterson and just all these this great music to listen to. And we had to do a hundred work hours, you know, to fit the <laughs> confines of this program, a hundred work hours of, of jazz performing. Uh, you know, over the high school years in order to graduate with this sort of diploma. So that was it. That's really what got me going. Also in this program, they would bring in great musicians from around Canada. Maybe, yeah, some guys from the States too to do workshops and give concerts and just all that was hugely inspiring, I'd say. So what was the first live jazz show you ever saw that blew you away? Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to remember now. We're going back a ways to high school. I mean, I definitely remember there's a trumpet player here. Uh, his name is Kevin Dean, and he is, uh, I mean, he basically started with a few other guys the uh, jazz program at McGill University here, and that's where I went to school. Um, anyway, they would do a lot of outreach to the high schools, sort of looking for potential McGill students. And I remember really clearly seeing him perform with his group, and which is funny because now I play with all of these guys here in Montreal. But that, I think, would have been the first live show that really blew me away and got me kind of hooked. So what is it that you love about being a professional musician? You know, there's so many aspects and angles that go into it. Essentially, you get to wake up and create music. But what do you like the best about being a professional musician? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I definitely enjoy making my own schedule, being self-employed, making my own schedule. I also teach and all of that, you know, I do on my own time. Uh, so in terms of lifestyle, that is fantastic. But the thing I love the most is the act of making music. I mean, that is really what sustains me. That's sort of my identity as a person, you know, Um uh, just the pure joy, the pure joy of improvisation. Yeah, I don't know what more I could say. <laughs> it really just comes down to that. The act of making music itself is clearly the best part about being a jazz musician. If you could get into a time machine and go back in time and see any musician anywhere, where are you going? Who are you going to see? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, well, I've always been a huge Herbie Hancock fan, and, you know, I could still see him now. Luckily, he's still around, but, you know, maybe to see him play in Miles' band, that would maybe be my first choice if I had to pick one. Herbie, Ron, and Tony playing with Miles, that would be, uh, that would be pretty cool. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, very simply put, why do you love jazz? Why do I like jazz? I like jazz in, because it's improvised music, and it's different every time you play it. It's different every time I hear someone play a standard that I've played a million times and I've heard other guys play a million times. Even so, it is different every single time, and I think that excites my brain. It excites my spirit. It brings me joy. Um, I think there is an element of communication and sort of interplay that I strive for anyway when I play jazz with other people. And I think when you reach those moments, you know, where everything clicks and you get almost this telepathic thing going on between the musicians, uh, yeah, that is it for me. That's the, the, the best thing about jazz. Everyone has a perception of you. Everybody has an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, your fans. But ultimately, you live your life. You have a perception of you. Who do you mm. think you are? Oh, my goodness. That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm – I think people probably have a pretty decent perception of me. I'm someone who enjoys life, likes to have a good laugh, likes – to be around people. I, I tend to be known as a, a good listener, and I really enjoy hearing about other people. So it's always strange for me to do an interview about myself and answer a question like this, <laughs> because I really like to, to hear about other people uh, and just uh, exchange ideas with other people. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that maybe says it. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So Artifact is a debut album, and I'm curious. What are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this album? I guess I hope that it sparks their their imagination and their interest. Um, I'll tell you a cool thing that happened the other day, and this will sort of exemplify what I hope people get when they listen to this album. But um, I reunited recently with three musicians who I used to have a band with about 20 years ago. We hadn't performed all together, you know, in about that long. And we reunited. I went traveling, and we did a couple gigs together out east in Canada. And we did one concert at in this uh, town called Moncton. And tons of people came out, and there were these really young musicians there, sort of young, uh, maybe just beginning university age. And after the show, they came up, and they were so excited about the show, and they said, that was so inspiring that we're going to go now, and it was like midnight or whatever, we're going to go to our jam space and jam, because what we heard tonight just inspired us to play music. Because I think they caught the sort of the joy that we were having in playing, you know, and the interplay that was happening between the musicians. So... That story to me, that was like, that made my week. I love that so much, and if people could get even a little bit of that from listening to the album, that would just make me overjoyed. That is a great story. So for anyone out there that wants to learn more about you, live shows, pick up the album in the proper places, stream it, where do they go? Well, I have a website, which is katewyattpiano.com. So that's an obvious place to go, but my album is available on all the platforms, and of course Bandcamp is a great place to go to look for that, so you could just search my name, Kate Wyatt Artifact, at Bandcamp. Beautiful, Kate. Thank you for opening up. Good luck with the album and live shows. I appreciate your time today. Oh, I appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you so much, Joe. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in Montreal, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Kate for her time, music, and cool. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. And for everything Joe Domino related, joedomino.com. And there you can kick in via Patreon. Patreon or PayPal. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.